Okay, the third and final stanza of The Emigre by Carol Rumans. And we've looked so far at how the poem starts really quite uh, joyous and reflective and nostalgic. It takes a slightly darker turn in the second stanza as time rolls its tanks and the frontiers close like waves. By the time of the third stanza, we have a much more uh, contrasted idea between her new city and her previous city and the tone is much darker, although throughout it all, as I've said all along, sunlight remains and sunlight, that image, that symbol of joy and hope and optimism is repeated at the end of every stanza. So what we are left with is an image of joy, an image of hope and optimism. I have no passport. There's no way back at all. But my city comes to me in its own white plain. It lies down in front of me, docile as paper. I comb its hair and love its shining eyes. My city takes me dancing through the city of walls. They accuse me of absence. They circle me. They, my city hides behind me. They mutter death and my shadow falls as evidence of sunlight. Okay, let's start off at the, at the beginning of the stanza then with no passport. And this is where it takes its darkest turn, if you like. Um, a lack of passport means that she is trapped. There's no way back for her. And uh, a really close link, of course, to uh, Tissue by Imtiaz Darker, where we've got the idea of um, the power of paper. And, and Passport is an example of that because she's now no longer free to, to go where she likes. So she's trapped. But there's no way back at all. But my city comes to me in its own white plane. Now, white we looked at in the last stanza again as a, uh, a symbol of uh, purity and innocence and beauty and again the idea of the white plane is there it's her memory white is pure and that's her escape and the paper plane is the metaphor that um, it's it's constant in her own memories the idea of paper again links to that paperweight in the first stanza her memories the photographs perhaps are held down and secured by that paperweight so her memory never wavers from the the joyous nostalgia of her original home it lies down in front of me docile as paper docile means uh, peaceful um, calm non-threatening uh, it lies down in front of me docile as paper i comb its air and love its shining eyes and if we take this simile it's like a pet um, and that relationship between her and her city is that that fond childhood pet um, which she likes to stroke, comb its hair, its shining eyes. So it, 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 it will always be there for her. It's faithful um, and it's another joyous image of her original home. And then we've got that end stop um, at the end of line 20 there before the final five lines of uh, the poem and the stanza and we have that end stop because the poem takes its darkest turn now and she goes to a new city my city takes me dancing through the city of walls we've got that juxtaposition there between dancing dancing is something you do when you are happy so when she thinks of her city she is happy it's an image of dancing of joy of celebration but the city of walls is juxtaposed there this is her new city this is where she feels trapped. Walls are a symbol, a metaphor, if you like, of um, being trapped. But also she's she's more enclosed. It's 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 more than just being trapped here. It's it's threatening, it's suffocating and claustrophobic for her. There's no escape for her. And so um, it's a really dark image of, of entrapment and, and fear and threat. And that threat gets even more when we start to repeat the pronoun they. It's in our key quote, but really it's the repetition of they that is most important. They accuse me of absence, they circle me. Circle, again, that feeling of being trapped. We don't know who they are yet, and I'll talk about that more in a minute, but certainly the idea of being circled, the city of walls and the circle are images of entrapment. They accuse me of being dark in their free city. My city hides behind me. They mutter death. So this repetition of they as a pronoun, they're nameless. 
if you know the name of something, it somehow feels less threatening. But they, it emphasises the fact that it's more than one. It's plural. It's a plural pronoun. So we know that there is more than one person surrounding her, which adds to this fear, this threat of the new city. Now, in my head, I kind of feel that um, maybe there's undertones of prejudice and maybe racism uh, that she's gone to uh, another city where she should be free but actually her heritage, her identity, her culture makes her stand out and therefore she's a target and, and actually it's ironic because where she's taken to be free she feels more trapped, she feels more threatened even though her own city is at war actually she feels much more alone much more in danger, much more threatened in this new city. So that's ironic um, towards the end. So they accuse me of absence. They circle me. They accuse me of being dark in their free city. Um, dark, again, as, as a piece of imagery, gives the impression of being threatening. So they accuse her of being threatening. And all she's done is had to be removed from her own home because of the war that's overtook it. She's done nothing wrong. She's not threatening. Um, but these nameless characters, these nameless inhabitants of this supposed free city um, actually make her feel uh, threatened and in danger much more than her original city ever did. Um, and look at the juxtaposition between dark and free. And again, that is all ironic. Where she has moved to be free, um, they accuse her of being dark okay my city hides behind me now that idea of hiding means that she can't perhaps um express her own identity express her own full personality because she's hiding some of it she's got to try and fit in and be more like them so it's, it's an image of, of of the difficulty of settling into a new place i think the difficulty for someone from a totally different culture and identity to fully um, assimilate to fully uh, get to grips and to um, belong in in a new place and the city hiding behind her is um, is both her identity but also it's it's her memories and she can't talk about it freely because she's threatened because she's told that she doesn't belong there even though she's been moved there um, and so through no fault of her own she has to hide um, her identity and her memories um, and the very person that she really is they mutter death the reason i've chosen that particular image is because that of all is the most secretive sinister threatening of all isn't it they mutter death the death is that that threat that's there um, and maybe this is a literal threat that she's been told she'll be killed maybe for her identity maybe for her race maybe they um they 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 certainly don't understand why she's been moved and um, they, they feel that her arrival in this new place is, is threatening somehow, perhaps to their jobs, perhaps to the identities of her new place. And it's all totally wrong because all that she's tried to do is escape uh, the war that, that is in her own home. Um, the idea of mutter, this verb mutter, it's secretive, which makes it more sinister. They're not being open in their threats. <coughs> so... It all builds to that irony where she's no longer safe. My shadow falls as evidence of sunlight. <coughs> so we've got this idea of sunlight coming through. And if you think what a shadow is, it has to be evidence of sunlight, even though the shadow itself is dark and the image is quite a dark, threatening, disturbing one. Actually, it's the evidence that somewhere there is the light, that joy of her other city of her memories and so that shadow that's cast can only be cast because there is some light somewhere so that joy that optimism even in the darkest times reminds her that she's got another identity she's got those um, memories that will always stay with her so even in that darkness of the shadow and the shadow as a metaphor is quite threatening it's very existence is because of darkness but it's the darkness cast by light somewhere else and that light is her memory that light is her identity that light is the joy and optimism that is always held with inside her and 
As always with these poems, we are left with a clear conclusion. My shadow falls as evidence of sunlight. So no matter where there is darkness, she will always have those joyous light memories. And so it ends on uh, a defiant note, if you like, that um, she's always going to keep that no matter how dark her surroundings, no matter how dangerous things are, she will always keep that, uh, that memory, that identity, that sunlight with her. Okay, so let's think about uh, where we would link emigre. And I think when I've taught it before, and certainly in, in the department where I teach, um, we, we tend to teach it alongside tissue because it, it's about um, identity. Um, there's clear links there with the, the recurring image of sunlight and joy and optimism. So the two poems go really, really well together in terms of identity and this idea of, of joy. Um, and we've also got between Tissue and Emigre the sense of um, a presence of um, control by someone else. The war in uh, Emigre, time rolls its tanks. Um, and the frontiers close like waves. Um, it's it's nameless really in tissue, um, but certainly that that idea of maps, borderlines. There's a stanza where there's a whole listing of different ways that man tries to assert control. But it's not the only poem it links really nicely with. I think it goes very well with checking out me history, because both are about maintaining an identity at difficult moments. In the emigration, she's been forced to move into another city, which is hostile towards her. In checking out me history, John Agard has to retain his own identity in the presence of uh, an oppressive education system that only forces him a white European history when he wants to learn about his black Caribbean heritage. So those two poems go really really well together. In my own personal opinion this one is slightly easier than tissue to understand. The images are much more clear um, but it depends on on how you see it because with tissue if, if you did um, and interpret the impressionistic qualities of tissue you you'll be able to, to really dig deep with with some of those quotes but for me they they work as a cluster tissue emigre and checking out my history